I hate to be the guy that says I told you so, but I remember during COVID, I did say Coach Rowe was going to be a millionaire, and now, you know, he just got that big job opportunity he got at uh, being the head strength coach at Purdue. So, you know, I'm very happy for him. Glad he's uh, over there, you know, with the uh, opportunity to help change that program. So what do you think makes him so successful and relatable? Just the guy, because obviously that's a part of being a strength coach, being a relatable and work for you guys. Um, you know, every day he's going to come in. He's going to be the same. You never know if he's having a bad day or not. He's going to make sure that he's doing everything to help everybody in the room get better. Um, a guy who is very, you know, he pays a lot of attention to detail. Um, he's laser fo focused in on the small details. And, you know, like I said, he's going to do whatever it takes to, you know, help guys improve. Um, you know, more knowledge of the game, more knowledge of our defense. Um, you know, I've put myself in a position where I can, you know, expand my football, you know, my, my football um, knowledge in terms of, you know, knowing what I need to know for, um, you know, not just myself, but learning different positions. Because, you know, the more positions I know, the easier it will be for me to, you know, help other guys line up, um, you know, and just be like a, a another coach out there on the field as well as going out and playing to my best ability. Um, I just feel like, you know, the more I know, the better my toolbox is. How comfortable, I guess, are you floating? I mean, obviously outside, and then, you know, if you need to go back to more of the nickel spot. Uh, very comfortable. Um, you know, as always, I, I, put my, I, I view myself as a guy that, you know, is willing to do whatever, um, play whatever position to help the defense, help the team. Um, you know, wherever my coaches need me, I'm gonna make sure that if they ask me to go play corner, I'll be the best corner I can be. If they ask me to play safety, I'll be the best safety I could be. Nickel, best nickel I could be. So just making sure that wherever I'm at, I'm, you know, doing everything possible to make sure I'm doing the best job possible. Um, I've as probably as much as, if not more than I've worked at nickel. Um, just always, you know, making sure I'm staying ready because at any moment I could be playing corner. How much what? Uh, every here and there I bounce outside, um, you know, take a couple reps for guys like DJ, guys like Will, um, you know, and if, if they needed me to go out there during, you know, practice, just Coach Clink more so wanted me to just learn it in case, um, just, you know, staying ready so I don't got to get ready type of thing. But now, you know, I'm making sure that it's another position that I know I can't play. What's the most unique NIL opportunity that you've had so far? Is there one that's like, man, this was cool or this was kind of weird? Um, I think the coolest one we've done or in my experience would be when we were able to fly in the helicopters with the National Guard. Um, that's not something, you know, you can just wake up and choose to do. Uh, it was a real cool opportunity. That was last summer we did that. Um, if I could do it again, I definitely would. A lot of guys were scared. A lot of guys were, you know, falling asleep uh, because they were nervous. But it was cool. It was awesome. Uh, to me, I was, sure, I was asking them if I could hang out the back and take pictures and stuff. Like it was, it was awesome. Um, personally, I don't think it matters. I think, you know, whatever date that game falls under, then that's when it, it should be played. Um, you know, we're ready to rock and roll at any time. Like what went into the flag plant at Ohio Stadium last year? Um, just emotions. Um, it was just one of those things that it happened in the moment. I can't say that. Would I do it again? I don't know. Um, it was just one of those things, you know, I was excited, I was happy, and it just, it happened. Is that something that you had planned, or it was just kind of a spur of the moment idea? Spur of the moment idea. Um, you know, it, it wasn't anything to disrespect Ohio State or anything like that. It was just, like I said, you know, I was happy to have went down there and did what we did with my teammates, um, and it just happened. Obviously, in your time at Michigan, the, the tone of that rivalry has really changed to, you know, Ohio State dominating the rivalry, and now you guys winning the last couple of years. What do you think? 
think it is that you've seen in your time at Michigan that has allowed that rivalry to flip the way it has? Um, just the change of culture and just how we attack things. Um, you know, the way we handle our business now, and, you know, this is a big credit to Coach Herb. Um, you know, he made sure that we're not letting any opportunity slip away from us. And we're making sure that we do everything to maximize every single day in preparation for big games, little games, um, you know, making sure that there's no complacency um, and just having the mindset of, you know, we have to go out there and take in order to get what we want. You talk about that change of culture, like, is that just like a different sense of belief, different confidence in the players? Um, just small little details like you know making the small things in our opinion the bigger things now um because you know everything matters nothing is bigger than the other um and you know, not like never looking too far ahead like i said like a big game is a small game is just as important as a big game because you can't say oh i'm gonna go prepare for ohio state because it's ohio state more than i will prepare for whoever we have week one, week two, because you can't get to Ohio State without getting through week one, week two. So everything is important to us. All the little details matter. And just, you know, daily finding what else can we do to be a better team. Um, just helping us, you know, get stronger in our run offense, our run defense, or our bigger personnel. Um, you know, because you know, a team like Georgia, you know, that's that's big boy football. That's the team that's going to run the football. They're going to play action you. Um, so in those period, in that period, um, you know, that's heavily, that's what we focus on. Um, you know, personally, I don't think that, you know, winning a national championship this year or not determines the future of this program. Um, I think the most important thing that we need to understand is, you know, we don't know what a national championship looks like. So our focus shouldn't be national championship is the only thing that we're focused on because we have to focus on the day to day process. Um, what's going to get us to a national championship? What haven't we done in the past two years that didn't get us over that hump? So we have to figure out, OK, from week one to week two, what adjustments do we need to make? Week two to three, week three to four, so on and so forth, to help us get over that hump. I'm going to ask you to go back in the time machine a little bit to uh, freshman year. Uh, sexual misconduct act with Brenda Tracy spoke to your team back then. Uh, just to make you guys aware of some issues around that. I'm curious, do you remember anything from speech with you guys or what do you remember about that? Um, I would say, you know, no communication isn't, you know, a green light, um, isn't consent. Um, and I remember, you know, when she was, you know, giving us that speech, how emotional she got, like how serious she was about the topic because, you know, oftentimes, like, you know, you could go out um, and you could think that because you're having a good conversation with somebody that's giving you, you know, the, the opportunity to do whatever it is you think, you know, might you might want to do. But no, like if someone's not comfortable in a the situation, then give them that space, give them the opportunity to let tell you when they're not comfortable. Um, and, you know, you know, the, what Coach Harbaugh does to make sure that we're never in those situations is he tells us, don't do it. And then he says after, I think, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., the likeliness of something bad happening every 30 minutes increases. So, you know, he does a great job of making us aware of, you know, don't put yourself in situations where anything bad like that could happen. She hasn't come back since pre-COVID. Uh, do you think there's some lessons that maybe she could teach some of the younger guys on the team that you want her to come back and share your story with um, You know, I think anything that comes out of, you know, any idea that she has or any topic that she sits in the room and discusses is, is one that should be taken serious, especially with the experience that she had. Um, you know, there's many things that she could teach, teach, you know, young men. Mike, I apologize if you've been asked this already, but how has the team responded to the Harbaugh's 
likelihood of being suspended those first four games? Um, honestly, it's nothing that you know we've brought up since you know the news came out. We just focus on, um, you know, just preparing in the weight room, getting ready for camp next week. Uh, we know Coach Harbaugh is going to be there at, at camp coaching. Um, whether he's there those first four games or not, I know that what he'd want us to do is go out there and play a, a great brand of football and, you know, lead on for the Block M. Um, I just go out there and, you know, play our brand of football, play Michigan football, play fast, play hard, play physical, um, you know, do what it is that he prepares us to do. So whether he's with us them four games or not, we're going to play as if he was right there coaching. So. Um, no, I, I, I feel like, you know, Coach Harbaugh is Coach Harbaugh. He is who he is. What you what you see him, how you see him is how he is. Um, the only Coach Harbaugh I can speak on is the one that I see day to day. And that's a great coach, a great guy. So. Mike right here. Let's talk about your musician. You have hobbies. It looks like musician, violin, piano. Talk about some of your hobbies that you like to do off the field. Off the field. So I haven't, you know, picked up an instrument in probably 10 years. So if I could, if you told me, you know, go play the piano or go play the drums right now, I'd look at you like you had 10 heads, like I had no clue how to. Um, but a couple things I like doing, uh, I'm big on bowling. I love the ball. I just got my own ball recently. Um, I like, you know, I like playing video games. I just built a gaming computer recently. I love to cook or learn how to cook. I watch a whole bunch of videos every here and there. I'll try to cook some. Last night I, I cooked a really, uh, or I made a really good chicken sandwich, fried chicken sandwich. Um, what else do I, I have? I have four, I have five pets at home. I got four dogs and a cat. So, you know, I love animals. Um, just, you know, just finding different things because, you know, football is, I love, I love football. Football is what I do. It's not who I am. So, you know, one, one thing I saw this, uh, I forgot her name, the basketball player. She said, if there's any advice she could give, to you know, young basketball players is find something you love outside of your sport, um, and you know I find that to be true because at the end of the day, your sport will come to an end, and there's other things in life that are out there that you can fall in love with. Last question: What's it mean to you to be here today representing Michigan, Big Ten Media Days, representing so many people before you, so many people after you? What's that mean to you? Um, again, like I, you know, I say this often: is you know what I do is bigger than myself. I'm um, just going out there and representing the Block M. Um, and understanding that, you know, the name Michigan holds a lot of weight. So everything we do, everything like I do, um, is, is is looked at. And uh, I just hope that everything I, I am doing, I'm making those before me proud. Mike, I was talking to Josh the other day. He said he's leaned on quite a bit since he got to Michigan. What does he bring? And how far along is he in terms of the job set? Job um, you know, Josh, Josh is an interesting guy, interesting guy. That's my boy. I actually just got off FaceTime with him. Um, you know, you know Josh, he's a character. Uh, but, you know, since he's been here, he's been doing a really good job for himself. Um, and, you know, don't don't be surprised if you hear his name called a lot on Saturdays. He, he works hard. You know, he keeps his head down. He minds his business. He puts in the work he needs to. Um, and, you know, since he got here, he's been around me. I told him, I said, look, just be around me, and I promise you that I'll help take you to a good a good, good place. Um, but one thing I need him to do is understand that he's on the team. Josh and I will be talking, like, and anytime Michigan is brought up, he's, he'll refer to Michigan as you guys, as if he's not on the team at the moment. So he, he's been working on it. Um, it's something we joke about, but, you know, Josh, that's my guy. Um, I mean, if it if it is, if it isn't, it is what it is, um, you know, like I said earlier. But I think, you know, it almost happened uh, this past season where we um, played them at the end of the season and then almost played them again in the playoffs, I think it was. So, like, if, if that's what the schedule calls for, then that's that's what it is. If it calls for a game in uh, September or October, then that's what it is. I, I think it doesn't really matter to me.
different way than actors, given physical toll they can be emotional toll or things. How are you dying? Um I'm not I'm not really sure how that how that would be. I think it's it's like a I don't know. Not not really sure. <laughs> Um, I would say, and you know, this is another big credit to Coach Herb. Um, and he says, like, no matter what's about to happen, who cares? You don't know if it's going to rain on a Saturday. You don't know if it's going to be sunny. You don't know if it's going to snow. You don't know what's going to happen. All you can do is make sure that your preparation allows you to play in whatever condition. So whether Coach would be leaving, whether Coach would be staying, whether JJ was starting, whether Cade was starting, it didn't matter to us. What mattered to us was making sure that whatever the case was going to be, we were going to be the best team possible with Coach Harbaugh, with Jay, with JJ, with Cade, start like it didn't matter to us. We just made sure that every individual was going to be the best individual they could be. You guys got to visit DC over the summer. I guess what are some of the highlights from that trip? Um, there's you know there's a bunch of highlights I could speak of, but you know my to me I think the best thing was just you know being able to spend that time with my teammates outside of football and just getting to learn so many different personalities, um, seeing what different guys are interested in. Um, one thing I'll say is, like, this is for Chris Bryant and Denar Robinson. They're not good space players. Me and uh, Makari. Was it Makari? That was my partner. Yeah, I think it was Makari. Makari Page. We were running spades against everybody that whole trip. Like, we walked in the White House. I had the deck of cards in my pocket, like, ready to go wherever. Like, it was it was fun. The Holocaust Museum here, or the one? Did I go to that one? I think I would have remembered if I did. So I don't. I'm, no, I don't think I went. Repeat that. Um, I think I probably only had two plays against them. Maybe one play was a, a blocking play. Uh, the other was he had caught a reception. Um, but overall, he's a good receiver. Um, I have a huge amount of respect for his game. He's going to be a top pick when he declares. Um, you know, he's a good receiver. One thing I do remember for sure is he's very quiet. Like I remember, like wanting him to say something. You know, like he's. But that's the type of guy. He is his his game is going to speak for him. So um, I can't wait to match up against him again this year. No, I wasn't like chirping at him. None like that. Is just. I don't know, maybe I wanted to, you know, see him say something. But, you know. When you watched him on film, preparing for that matchup, in case you guys got matched up, was there anything you were thinking, I've got to do something different against him, I've got to do something in particular against him to try to take him out? Um, no, not really. It was just watching him, watching his, his film, making sure I, I know what type of releases I'm going to get when the ball is on this side or the ball is, you know, wherever the ball was, what foot he has, you know, up. Um, just understanding like what his techniques are, how he plays the ball in the air, are his hands late, does he jump a lot, like, you know, just really studying him as an opponent and uh helping that using that to help my preparation. It seems like what he does with long air is what he's kind of special. Like when he's tall and he's got other skills, but that's what he can make lines. Yeah, he, I think he if his uh spectacular catch rating on Madden was to be rated by me, I think it would be probably in the nineties. Um, I think the best way is to not even read into it, um, not pay attention to it. Like, we appreciate what the media does. We appreciate you know, the good things you say. Uh, we appreciate the bad thing the media says. It's all motivation at the end of the day. Um, but all we can do is worry about who we have in Schenbecker Hall 
and make sure that everybody in Schenberg Hall is on the same page and everybody's goal is the same goal. Making sure that everybody's individual goals only help the team's goals. Um, Kay's a guy you can lean on. Kay's a guy that rubs off on you. Um, honestly, the leader I am is, you know, definitely comes from Kay. Like I was, I was around Kay a lot. Um, I definitely picked up on some of his traits. Um, Kay's a guy that came in with a, a, a lot of confidence. Um, you know, I came to Michigan because of Kay. He was probably 95% of the reason I came to Michigan. I won't say 95, I'll say about 85. Of course, coach, the culture, everything like that. But K is a huge reason why I came to Michigan. When I was committed to Virginia Tech, he texted me um, and was like, if you come to Michigan, we'll win a uh, Big Ten championship together. I'm 18 years old. I'm like, what is this guy talking about? How does he know? Whatever, whatever. Um, I, but, you know, I decided to believe him, and he stood on that. You know, we won our first Big Ten championship in 21. Um, but, you know, K, he's a brother to me. I always wish him the best of luck wherever he is, and I hope he has a great season. And you know, hopefully, we can see each other right here in the stadium. Mike, there's some reports out there that Coach Harbaugh is going to be suspended and potentially first day of four games. How do you think the team will react on Saturdays if their head coach is on the sidelines? Um, we'll say great. You know, we'll go out there and play the football that he wants us to play. I know whether he's there or not, he's going to be happy. Um, Happy to watch us playing, not happy to not be coaching if he's not there. But, um, you know, we're going to go out there and do what he'd want us to do. Coach Harbaugh? Oh, Blake. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, great. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's back. He looks like two million bucks at the moment. Um, but, you know, he's been he's been doing a great job with his recovery. Uh, he's been attacking the workouts. Uh, I'd say, you know, Blake looks the best he's ever looked since he's been here. So I'm excited to go out there and take the field with him this year. And I can't wait to see what he does. Um, you know, for the offense, you know, I think, you know, a good way for them to look at it is, you know, we have two potential Heisman candidates in that, you know, offensive backfield with Blake coming back. I'd say even three. Donovan Edwards, please don't sleep on him. Um, but Donovan, Blake, and JJ, like, those are three guys that can potentially win a Heisman, in my opinion. Um, so, like, if that doesn't drive them enough, then I don't know what what will drive them, but I feel like our offense is going to do a great job this year. Uh, it's, it's, it's like, who do you prepare for? Do, I, do we prepare for Blake? Do we prepare for uh, Donovan? Um, do we prepare for the pass game? I just feel like it, it gives so many options with, you know, having, you know, people like that in our backfield. And then we have a great receiver room. We have the old lines coming back. Like, you know, I feel like our offense is going to be a machine this year. Um, I, I know one thing JJ has been working on daily is his leadership skills, um, just trying to continue pushing guys in the right direction. So I think, you know, somebody like me can help him do that, just continuing being around him and, you know, leading him in the right direction, of course. Um, currently at the moment, I'm not sure. But one thing I know is we're very proactive, not reactive. So, um, when that time comes, everything should be figured out. Uh, by staying focused. I think, you know, getting too caught up in the what ifs and, you know, all the outside noise is when, you know, teams get led in the wrong direction. Um, just blocking all, all that noise and, again, just understanding that at the end of the day, all we have is who's inside of Shen Becker Hall. Mike, when you were talking about how a good team is, are there any members that stick out in your mind and things that just speak to how good of a team is? 
I would say, you know, during workouts, like, so K is a super, you know, super hard competitor. Um, but during workouts, we have, like, different challenges. Um, you know, K is in there trying to beat everybody. And let's say he loses, he's, you know, he's he's mad at himself. He's, oh, man, but within the next second, he's, you know, he's back cheering a teammate on. Um, one thing K did for me, he taught me how to play golf. Um, and, you know, he's he's trash talking me. I have no clue how to play golf. But he's teaching me while trash talking me. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get good one day. And then we could really do this for real. But um, just a guy who's always willing to help, a guy who's always willing to cheer the next man on. Um, no matter what. You said. Um, so AWOC, he's been doing a great job. You know, he's daily, you know, trying to meet with Coach Clink to learn the playbook. Um, he's always around Will Johnson, trying to work on technique. So I know for a fact he's a guy that wants to get better. Um, Josh Wallace. I think he's a guy who's going to come in and, you know, immediately impact the room in the sense of getting the other guys to compete, getting the other guys to work hard, and just, you know, giving that extra push because no one wants a guy to come in and take their, and take their spot. But coming in, you want to take somebody's spot. So it's going to just increase the, the level of competitiveness in the room. Um, but, you know, I think there's, you know, a good amount of guys right now that could play in that, you know, that next uh, – that second, uh, that second cornerback spot. So you know, I can't wait to watch the battle, be a part of the battle during camp. You know, uh, come next week. McBurrows? Uh, he's another one. Give me one second. But McBurrows, he's another one. You know. He easily could play nickel. He could play corner. Um, he just, you know, continue, he's working hard every day. He's looking good in the weight room. He just has to continue, you know, doing the necessary, the necessary, the necessary things, um, the small things. And I think, you know, McBurrows can easily be a, a guy starting in, you know, the, the corner spot. Um, right now, you know, we're not really worried about it. Um, you know, coach hasn't brought it up to us. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, all we, all we can do is just focus on, you know, camp coming next Tuesday. You know, we can't worry about right now if coach is going to be there. Coach probably, coach wouldn't want us to worry about if he's going to be there. I know he's going to, you know, come August 2nd, day one of camp. Coach Harbaugh is going to be there making sure that we're getting prepared, making sure that, that practice is the, f the best practice we have of camp so far. And then the next practice will be the next best practice. And just, you know, continue wor worrying about the 24 hours of that day. Uh, we, know, we know he'll be there in spirit. Um, like I said, it is what it is. If, if You know, at the end of the day, he's going to want us to go out there and play how he'd expect us to play. Another one, like I said, there's so many. I could go on and on about the cornerback room of who could play. Um, shout out to all of our DBs. Um, whole, it's a group of talented guys. Uh, but, you know, to touch up on Keyshawn Harris, uh, super athletic, super fast, super strong. Not the tallest guy, but, you know, he'll, he'll play like he's 6'2", 6'3". Um, great cover guy. His man skills this offseason have grown um, but that goes back to, you know, him properly preparing himself, you know, worrying about the small details, making sure that he's doing the little things right daily. And, you know, the, the more he prepares himself, the more it'll help translate to, you know, on field. So, like I said, I could go on and on about every guy in the room of who could potentially be our, our, our next corner. Um, I just I can't wait to, to, to see the battle in camp.
much before going to a running back market that's depleted, right? All the levels of, of the decision they came back. What message does that send? Um, it sends the message of a guy who cares about his teammates, a guy who is truly bought into a program um, and just wants to, you know, give everything back to the program that he can't possible. Um, and, like, you know, Blake, he's going to come in and work hard every single day and do everything he can to make sure that he's the best version of himself to help the team. Um, he's a leader on this team. He has a, he has a voice on this team. And, you know, guys lean on Blake. Guys try to, you know, model what Blake does. Um, and, you know, he has he's a big impact in that running back room. Um, I know, you know, they all look up to Blake. So, you know, having him back is, 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 is great for us, um, and we can't wait to use it to our advantage. How did you find out Mikey and Mikey? Did he text you? Coaches? Um, it was – he never told me, like, straight up he was coming back, but he told me there was – you know, he, he may or may not come back. Um, but, you know, just like the rest of the world, I was watching that episode that day, waiting to see if he was or not. So, and we all got the good news he was.